There is nothing special about this phone. Yep, this is just a normal, boring handset that doesn't do anything remotely unique or special at all. Really, I mean, just click off this video, it's a boring waste of time. Oh, actually, hang on. What's this? Oh. Yeah, uh, no need to click off anymore. So this is the ZTE Axon M, a completely absurd dual screen phone from 2017, and some would say the predecessor to today's phablets like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, although it's quite clear that the execution of the Fold was, well, a bit smoother. But nevertheless, this is definitely something that you don't see every day. And so, with that in mind, how usable is this contraption four years later? Well today, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the ZTE Axon M from a 2021 perspective, with an in-depth review, and whether its questionable execution makes it a terrible idea to buy, or if it's a cracker of a deal for those looking for something a little out of the ordinary. And spoiler alert, there is a lot to unpack here. So at a first glance, the Axon M looks just like any typical handset from around maybe 2015 to 2017, nothing special. Unfold it however, and you're faced with a huge phablet-like interface. No, it's not a true foldable like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, since there's no bendable glass on the display. Instead, the Axon M achieves a larger screen area the old-fashioned way, putting two separate displays side by side each other, as seen on devices like the Microsoft Surface Duo and the LG G8X. So what exactly can you do with two screens? Well, turns out the answer is quite a lot. There's three different layout modes, each of which can be selected by pressing the M button at the bottom of the screen. The first setting we have is called mirror mode, which will mirror whatever you're doing on the first screen on the second one. Now, yes, this isn't the most practical setting, but it might be useful when, for example, watching a video with someone across a table. But again, I can't really see anyone using this mode very much. But the next option you have for the dual screens, extended mode, is far more useful as this setting will take full advantage of the Axon M's enormous screen real estate, stretching out whatever you're doing to all 6.75 inches of the extended display. This is perfect for web browsing, maps and typing documents, as well as a few other knickknacks, like being able to watch a YouTube video in landscape mode and scroll through the comments at the same time. The phablet experience would actually be pretty close to on par with the Samsung Galaxy Fold if it wasn't for the bezel in the middle. Because of how it distorts things, tasks like watching movies or YouTube YouTube videos in this mode don't work as well as you might have speculated, and it's honestly a shame considering the potential for such a huge amount of screen. But I mean, considering it's two separate displays mushed together, there wasn't really any other option. Now at this point, you're probably wondering what gaming is like on these two displays, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a pretty underwhelming experience. Again, the bezel in the middle will distort the picture, which is very intrusive, particularly in shooting games, plus the device itself just feels very clunky to hold. So yeah, yeah, I'd say just stick to things like reading and browsing the web. Now the last mode the Axon M offers is the dual screen mode, which in my opinion is the most useful. Dual screen mode allows you to run two apps at the same time using the two displays. So yeah, you guessed it. You could have YouTube open while playing Clash Royale, or you could be watching a sports game while texting about it in a group chat with your friends, or even something really absurd like scrolling Instagram while cancelling a debit card you just lost. Whether you're working or playing, the possibilities are just endless. And lastly, if you ever feel like two displays is a bit too much, you can always fold the second screen away for the device to return to a somewhat normal phone again, and it'll function just like any other standard handset. Now, especially since the displays are the main attraction of the Axon M, ZTE also made sure to deliver on the quality of the two panels as well. Both 5.5 inch panels sport equal resolutions of 1920 by 1080p, along with pixel densities of 424 pixels per inch. These specs ensure a very high quality viewing experience, aside from the bezel in the middle of course and whatever you're putting on those two displays is going to come off really crispy and vibrant. Although, with that being said, I would like to mention that they actually appear to have two different white points to each other. I don't know how visible this is going to be on camera, or why ZTE let something like this slide, but it seems that the two panels display different shades of white, which is probably going to be a bit off-putting for some people, but overall for me, it's not really a big deal. But it's still worth mentioning. And lastly, I thought I'd quickly point out the elephant in the room, the gigantic chin and forehead. 
Yes, they're there, and they're monstrous by today's standards, but in 2017 this was fairly typical, so no point in knocking it I guess. But with those issues aside, these displays boast excellent quality, and the high-end specs really help to make the dual screen magic happen. So yeah, a lot to take in there with the displays, but don't worry, we are far from done with the quirkiness. So now let's take a look at an area where it's extremely prominent, the design. The ZTE Axon M uses a boxy smooth aluminium design around the edges, and a plastic feel on the back of the two displays. Now this all definitely looks and feels sleek and premium, although it is worth noting that because of the way the screens fold in, the secondary display also doubles as the back of the phone, so there is a significant risk that it might get a bit scratched up, and plus this also means no wireless charging. Also, because of the dual displays, the Axon M is far from the thinnest or lightest phone out there, weighing in at 230 grams and sporting a a whopping thickness of 12.1 millimeters. For comparison, the iPhone 12 is 164 grams and 7.4 millimeters thick, and so it shouldn't come as a surprise that it feels very unwieldy and hefty in the hand, especially with that hinge just poking out of the side like that. How rude. Although, when you're holding the phone with the display folded out, the weight gets a bit more evenly distributed. But it's still not comfortable per se, unless it's in landscape mode, in which case it kind of feels like you're holding a DS, and is very nice to grip. Coming back to that hinge though, it's extremely solid, and no matter how much you jiggle and shake the phone around in dual screen mode, it doesn't show any signs at all of giving in. Oh, and also, can we just take a moment to appreciate the mouth-watering sound the hinge makes when you open and close the phone? I could listen to that all day. Now taking a look at the side of the device, there's a power button mounted fingerprint scanner, volume buttons and TV mode button, which I'll explain what that means in a second. The fingerprint scanner on the power button though is extremely convenient, plus it unlocks the phone really quickly, and in fact, I think this is actually so much more convenient than the iPhone's Face ID, especially since we're all running around in masks these days. In addition to that, you'll also find a third button below the power and volume buttons. This can be pressed to activate what ZTE called TV mode, and what you can do is set a specific app to be opened whenever you press it for quick access. Although back in the day, you were supposed to set it up with your favourite pay TV channel app, but if you're constantly on, for example, YouTube, now you don't have to go to all that effort of swiping around to get to it. Just hold down the button to instantly open it, or you can actually double press it to activate the camera. Oh, and speaking of the camera, we're actually still not done with the quirks, because the one on this phone works in a really uniquely clunky manner. And yes, you heard me right, I said the one, as in just a single 20 megapixel lens on the entire device. And ZTE did this because of the dual displays. Now, uh, how do I explain this? Uh, well, if you want to take a rear-facing photo, you have to physically turn the device around so that the camera is facing the other way which means you use the secondary display as a viewfinder. And likewise, if you want to take a selfie, pressing the camera flip button will give you a prompt on the screen to turn the phone back around. Yeah, it's a pretty weird and inconvenient system, and one that can definitely get confusing at times, but all in all, this is kind of hilarious. Now the actual image quality, however, is a bit disappointing, and it definitely falls behind modern flagships by a long shot. Although, to be fair, the cameras weren't the main focus of this device. Photos taken on the rear, though, are at best mediocre. Everything looks really muted and washed out to be honest, and due to the lack of optical image stabilization, it's a lot harder than normal to take a shot that isn't blurry to some degree. Although on the other hand, since the camera is 20 megapixels, selfies will come out looking pretty detailed, although still with those muted colors I mentioned earlier. Night shots are admittedly even worse, with grainy, blurry, and just overall low-end images being produced. As for video recording, the Axon M can shoot it up to 4K at 30 frames per second, and honestly, it was nice of them to put 4K on here. Now yes, colours are once again not going to be great, and it can be pretty shaky considering the lack of OAS. Again though, amazing cameras weren't the point of this device, and so as I said before, I'm willing to let this slide because of, well, the dual displays. Moving on to the performance, the ZTE Axon M still does a passable job. On this device, we're given the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chipset, along with 4GB of RAM. This chipset was actually already a year old when the Axon M was released, and honestly, 4GB gigabytes doesn't really seem like enough RAM to run two displays at once, especially if you're running two apps at the same time. And so, with those factors in mind, performance on here is kind of in a weird zone. It's somewhat smooth, and it loads things fast enough to not be painful, but a power user would definitely not have a good time here. Light tasks like YouTube, Netflix, emails and web browsing are going to be just fine, and non-intensive games aren't a problem either. 
but you know, anything beyond that is going to be a struggle for the Axon M. But for the average non-power user, it still works just fine, although at the same time, it's not really ideal. On the software side of things, the Axon M's latest compatible version is Android 7.1.2, which is quite a bit behind as of now. This means that down the line, less and less apps will be able to be downloaded, plus security is also likely to become a problem. But I mean, for now, you can still do pretty much anything, you can download any app, and go about your business without any issues. It's just that, in a few years' time, this might not be the case anymore. Plus, you're not getting the new software features of more recent versions. ZTE did actually say at the time of release that they were working on an Android 8 update for this phone, but it unfortunately, for whatever reason, never got released. So it's stuck on Android 7 forever. But being stuck on Android 7 is nowhere near as bad as being stuck with the battery life on here. The Axon M packs a 3180mAh cell, which is pretty darn small for a phone with two displays. Even when just using the one screen, you'll probably struggle to get through a full day. And if you're a heavy user of the dual display mode, good luck squeezing out more than a few hours on a single charge. Battery life on the Axon M wasn't great when it was released in 2017, and over the years, most of these handsets will have heavily degraded batteries. So it's probably safe to say that the battery life on here is, in a nutshell, uh, kind of unusable. Plus, battery replacements for these things are just so rare that they deserve to have a state named after them. Yeah, it's an unfortunate reality, but yeah, not really much you can do about it apart from making sure you've always got a charger close by. And so, with the review out of the way, let's take a look at whether you should actually still go out and buy one of these if you're looking for a cheap Galaxy Fold alternative. Well, if you've watched up until this point, and you've listened to everything I've said about the phone, the answer most likely won't surprise you, but in my opinion, purchasing one of these to use as your daily driver is just nothing short of a terrible, terrible idea. Yes, it does have two displays, but in terms of actually using it as your daily driver, the phone falls very short. The camera, the battery life, software support, the overall convenience, you name it. This was a highly experimental device back in its day, therefore it was far from perfect. While this might seem like a really cool device to use on camera, the user experience is a lot different in person, and you really have to try it out for yourself to fully understand how clunky everything feels. Think of it like owning an old Jaguar. It might seem like a fun idea at first, but you are going to run into a lot of problems very soon. Additionally, these are very overpriced on the used market, coming in at around 400 to 500 bucks Australian, which is honestly pretty terrible value for the specs you're getting, even if, again, it does have two displays. Although, taking a step back, I'd just like to clarify that everything I've said is not to say at all that I don't love this phone for how weird and quirky it is, and I honestly can't get enough of its uniqueness, and I find myself playing around with it just for fun every once in a while, so it's cool for tech enthusiasts like myself to have in their collection and marvel at. The problems only arise when you try and use this phone as your main handset. And so, that pretty much concludes my 2021 review of the ZTE Axon M. This is by far the weirdest phone I've ever gotten my hands on, and it definitely has its fair share of quirks, but unfortunately, the execution just wasn't there, and so, using it in day-to-day -day life is going to be a very clunky and unpleasant experience. Although, that's not to say that this isn't a fun or unique device to mess around with every once in a while. If you enjoyed this video, or found it helpful in any way, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Text Free for more reviews, comparisons, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Text Free, and I'll see you as always next time.